Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about how to use combo boxes to both select and display values that exist on another table than what is being shown on our forms. So let me describe the problem to you here just for a moment so you understand the goal of this video. Let's say that you have a form that is displaying the following values from a table. Right? So our form is showing us the product names, some supplier IDs, a category ID, the units, and the price. And we, of course, have the product ID hidden because we don't want the user to see that ID. The problem comes when we take a look at these foreign keys that point to values that exist on another table, such as the supplier ID. Now, the supplier ID, we know, points to another table that would be the supplier table that has a supplier ID with the supplier information in it. And instead of showing the supplier ID on our form, what we really want to show is the supplier name. So how do we make that happen on our form and still allow us to change back and forth? We want to be able to select different values or change the values or view what they are. How do we make that change possible, knowing there is this connection between these two tables? So that's what we're going to tackle in this video, and the simple solution is to use combo boxes. So back here in our database, I first want to go ahead and create a new form. So I'm going to go to Create, Form Design, and we're going to uh, bind this form to our People table. And let me just open that up so you can once again see what's in here. We have the ID, first name, last name, date of birth, salary, picture, active, and person type. And you'll notice person type is a number. And if we just take a quick look at it, we can see person type is related to some sort of, uh, it is a foreign key to some other table. And that other table is, of course, this people types table, where we have employee, customer, and vendor. So when we create this form here that's going to display the people that we have, one of the things we want to make sure we do is that the person type doesn't just show up as a number or some sort of erroneous data. We actually want to show this type name of the people types. So let's walk through this. The first thing we need to do is, of course, bind our form to the data. So I'm going to go over to the data tab. Once again, I've selected this little square up here in the upper left corner of my form in the design view. Then I'm going to go over to the data tab under my property sheet and I'm going to select the record source to be people. And let's just go ahead and start adding some values here. Uh, actually, the first thing I want to do is put a title on here. And if we just take a quick look at what we did with our basic form and go to the design view of that, we can see that it is, in fact, uh, where's, okay, there we go. Calibri and size 36 is the font size. And I just kind of want to keep a similar look here. So let's go ahead and add... Uh, where's our design? There we go. Add a label here. This is just going to say people. And it was Calibri of 36, which Calibri is the default size 36. And one neat little thing is uh, when you get this kind of resizing of text inside of a, a small little label here, notice that it cuts off the rest of the text. If you want to automatically resize it instead of having to kind of drag and, and, and move the corners all around to make the right size, if you just double click on this little corner, it'll actually auto resize the, the label to match the text that's inside of it. That's a handy little tool. You can do that with both text boxes and labels. It's really a nice little feature that you can use. Okay, so we're going to make this our people form. Uh, let's go ahead and insert uh, a... a text box here. This is going to be our ID, so we don't want a label for it. The control source, once again, we go to the data tab. Our control source is ID, and we'll resize this. It doesn't really need to be that big. And we need to go to the format and change the visibility to false or no. And then I'm just going to move this up into the upper left-hand corner. And once again, we need that because that is the crucial piece of information that tells the form exactly which, uh, it, it's a required field of the data for the table. So if we're gonna make any changes to the form, with uh, we can't do it without that value being displayed somewhere on our form. Even though it's hidden, it is somewhere on the form, and so the form has a record of which record it is that we are changing. 
Okay, so we've got our ID. Let's go ahead and add some more here. And we'll go ahead and make this one. I'm gonna change the data to first name. And I'm just gonna copy this and paste it. And we'll change this to last name. Copy again, date of birth. Change data, this one to salary. And I'm gonna skip the picture one for now. We'll go with active and person type. And that bottom one is the one we're eventually gonna to wanna to change to a combo box. And we'll, talk, we'll tackle that in just a bit. Let me go ahead and change the labels here. So first name. This is always the boring part, I think, renaming everything. So if you wanna skip ahead a little bit, you certainly can in the video. And here's our salary. Oops, didn't wanna change that. Okay, active. And finally, the person type. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at what this form looks like when we display it or when it opens up. And I do need to close these tables first because it's gonna complain since it's bound to these tables. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at this and we see Steve Bishop, uh, 2017, 60,000, active is true, person type is true. And interestingly enough, if you click in these fields, it's a little weird and we can talk about active and, and what true, the definition of true here is to be equal to negative one. That's kind of a weird thing. But person type, you'll notice, is person type two. And if I click through these, Person type two, I think the only one that's different is this last one here. Yeah, person type one for Jane. So the value shows up interestingly as one or two, and we're not getting the actual vendor information, right? We're not getting the actual vendor, or I'm sorry, the, the, the people type. So when we look at people types, I meant vendor. We're not seeing a vendor, we're not seeing customer or employee here. So how do we fix this on our form so that person type actually displays the type of person? Uh, there are several ways you can do this, but there is kind of the simple way that I wanna show you in this video, which is to convert this person type to a combo box. So I'm gonna change the, I'm gonna go back to the design view and I'm gonna change this person type text box to a combo box. There's a few ways you can do that, but the simplest way I think is just right click on the text box and you'll see there's this option of change to and gives you a few of the, the different controls you can change it over to. You can see I could change it to a label, a list box, or a combo box. And I'm gonna change it to a combo box. Now, once I do that, is my problem solved? Well, let's just take a quick look. Nope, it still says true. And if I click on it, it gives me the number instead of the actual uh, value. And of course that makes sense because we haven't associated this combo box with the people types table just yet. So I'm gonna to go to person types combo box here. I'm gonna change the row source. If I click on the drop down here, you'll see it gives me all the queries and all of the tables that are available to me. I'm gonna go ahead and select people types. Now, does that solve the problem? Let's take a quick look. Now, we still see just kind of this value of oh, one, two, or four are now selectable. Uh, but this still doesn't solve the problem. How do we get the name to, to appear? Well, if we look carefully at the combo box properties, you'll see that we, we have this bound column. Now the bound column means the column of the table that we are bound to. That column is essentially the primary key or the, the lookup value the value that is gonna be used to find the record in the table that we should be displaying. So when we say that this is, uh, when, when the value in our form is either a one or a two or a four, then what's going to happen is that is going to bind to that actual record within our people types table. So, oops, if we just take a quick look at this again, of uh, people types one, two, and four. So it is displaying on our, on our combo box, this column, because it is bound to that column. And we can change some of that behavior here. If 
we go back into the design view, we do want it to stay bound to that column because that is our primary key of the table. But what we want to do is we want to change what is visible. So I'm going to go to the Format tab, and you'll see Column Count. The column count is how many columns are visible on this combo box. And if I change this to a 2, we should now see both of the columns that are here on our People Types table. So let's just see what that looks like. If we go to Form View, if I click on the dropdown, now you'll see both of them are visible. And it's a little annoying because we still see the true, and that's kind of goofy but we can fix that here. If I go back into the design view, I want to make it so that it is only showing the person the, the person type name. I think it was the uh, type name, right? This is the column we want to actually display. So go back into my, my combo box, and I'm going to change the column widths so that the first column is actually zero in size. And I put the, it, it's hard to tell, but it's a quotation marks to indicate inches. And when you do that, what you're doing is you're taking that first column and you're, you're, you're making it hidden. You're making it invisible. It still exists on the combo box, but you can't see it now because it has a zero width to it. Now the the remaining sizes here, and, and you can change the width by putting in commas here. So I could put in comma one inch. And when we do that, now when we look at our form, you'll see that it only shows the second column. Even though we have both columns uh, actually being displayed in the combo box, because we set the width of the first one to zero, it doesn't appear. It's kind of just there in the in the border, if you will. And that means that now the second column will appear. So now if we change, if we just kind of go all the way through here, we can see when we go to Jane, who is an employee, we see the person type is employee. And if we look at our uh, people types here, or our people, you'll notice two, 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 one, uh, two, 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 one, right? Let's say we wanted to change that. So the person type is no longer an employee. We want to change it to something else. So let's say, okay, so Joyce here is a customer. Wait, how did that happen? Uh, okay, are, are they all, yeah, they're all customers, that's why. Okay, interesting, we changed everybody to a customer. Well, I'm obviously not a customer, I'm an employee, so I'm just gonna change this by selecting it uh, and putting it to employee instead. And you'll see that now my, my people table will reflect that in my person type if I save it here, hold on. Uh, employee should be true, okay. Oh, let's save this form. So we'll call this uh, people form. Okay, I change it to employee. And that should now, oh, I have to close the people and reopen it. There we go. We can see person type is now a one, which is an employee. So we have an employee for me. If we go over to Jane, which is number five record, Jane is also an employee, but all of the others are customers. Let's change Joyce Reynolds to vendor. And I'll just close this people table and reopen it so that we can get a refreshed view of this. And you'll see, uh, did we, did we, what did we do wrong here? It should be vendor. Yeah, if I go back and forward, there we go. Okay, it did update eventually. So there we go. So it's a four. Now, this is uh, the way that you can display this data. And in just going back and forth, you'll see that anytime I make a change, it does in fact save it. It just kind of accesses it, look, acting a little goofy on the table look. But if I change Denise from customer to vendor, and we go back and forth, we can see Denise is still a vendor. So all of these values that we selected for person type are stored in our table in our people table. Uh, and that's just one easy way that you can use in order to display the person type. I'd like to thank the following channel members. Without your contributions to this channel, it would not be possible to make this video. Thank you.